How many of y'all know he's able today? Y'all know it? Yeah. Come on, man. I know I ain't the only one. I'm just a little dude from East St. Louis. I know I ain't the only one who knows we serve an able God. Yeah. Exceedingly. Abundantly. Above all. All you could ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. I need y'all to sing it with us. This is what I want y'all to sing. God is able to do just what he said. He would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you. He's able. Come on, y'all. I need y'all to sing it with us. Sing. He's able. Yeah. I need y'all to sing it with us again. Say, God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Come on. He's able. Now look, we're gonna go up. Look, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna say, oh, oh. I want y'all to do it. Say, sing our praises to the Lord today. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, you got it. He's able. I want y'all to sing it with me. Say, thank you, Lord. upon God cause he won't give up on you I need y'all to say it three more times say don't give up on God cause he won't give up on you don't give up on God cause he won't give up on you he's able well, what's up, City of Joy family? It's been a minute since we've been on video like this. We'll do this a couple of more weeks, Lord willing. And we are praying about meeting all together informally in the JJK after uh, July 12th. Um, that'll be our uh, second Sunday in July. And then after that, we're praying about... Um, just kind of getting together informally in the JJK all together. We'll give more information about that. But just be praying. Uh, what matters is Jesus is lifted up and we are gathered, loving each other, loving the city. Whatever that looks like is not as important as us being about that. And so uh, praise God. It's good to be back with you in our joy communities for a few more weeks. Uh, happy Juneteenth weekend. Praise God for uh, the spiritual freedom and the physical freedom and the working out of that continually in our day. And so uh, celebrate uh, that grace as well as Happy Daddy's Day. Happy Daddy's Day to all the dads. What an honor, what a privilege. We need your prayers. We need strength to raise our children up in the fear and instruction of the Lord and his gospel. Peace out to all my Daddy's in the house. Um, two opportunities 
Two opportunities to pray down powerful change in our city. Two opportunities. Uh, one this Wednesday coming up June 23rd. We usually have a men's uh, Zoom prayer at 7 a.m., but it's supposed to be so nice. And in this season, I sense the Lord pushing us in the public, just like we went outside uh, to do our baptisms. We going outside to pray as often as we can. It's supposed to be beautiful weather on Wednesday morning. So at seven o'clock, uh, men and women rallying in front of East Side along that sidewalk is a public little area across from the Joneses and the Harrises. We're going to pray at 7 a.m. We're going to put that, send that out to y'all. Anybody that can raise up and pray down God's powerful change in our city this Wednesday at 7 a.m. outside, please join us. Then next Wednesday, June 30th at 7 p.m., the last Wednesday of the month, we're going to 3310 State Street and we're going to spend 30, 40 minutes, not long, on that property praying. I ain't going to say nothing else about that. If you're curious as to why we would choose 3310 State Street to pray, come out and join us. We'll get you more information. Last Sunday, your last Sunday, in Acts 2, 37 to 41, we saw the Lord use three Ds, three Ds. We were in a JJK. Three, three D's to save how many souls? Who remembers? 3,000 souls. God used three D's to do that through a weak man named Peter. And I believe he's calling you and me to these same three D's. Number one, we saw in Acts 2, declare the gospel. Like our brother Peter, God is calling you and me, declare the gospel. Tell people that Jesus came. Tell people that he died on a bloody cross for their sins and ours, tell people he rose from the dead. This is what we need to declare. If we want to see more baptisms, if we want to see more souls saved, we need to declare that. But then number two, we demand a response. Really, the gospel demands a response. They said, what do we have to do? Peter simply said two things. Repent. Bust a you. Do a U-turn. You were born with your back to God. Turn around and know that God will receive you because of what Jesus did on that cross. So you need to turn to God. You need to repent. And then when you repent and trust in Jesus, you need to get baptized. You need to get water baptized. Peter told them then, and that's the same thing we tell people now. And we're still celebrating the baptisms and the new life in Christ for our brother Devin and our little sisters, Karis and Eve. Continue to pray for their spiritual growth and protection. And then lastly, that third D was describe the benefits. We got to tell people, look, God is so good. When you trust in him, he's going to forgive all your sins. Everything you've ever thought, everything you ever said, everything you ever done that hurt somebody and, and offended God because of the cross, he's going to cleanse it and remove it. Then you get the gift of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. And so the takeaway from last week is real, real powerful, but real simple. God wants to use your mouth to bring transformation to this city. He wants to use your mouth to bring transformation to this city as you declare the gospel this summer, as you demand a response. Really let the gospel demand a response. Repent. Come and be baptized. We're going to baptize you at City of Joy. We're going to do it outside. And then describe those benefits to people. Let them know God in Christ forgives you of all of your sins and he comes to live inside of you. And so uh, with that said, we're going to keep moving in this little section of the scriptures and acts uh, because what happens next is, is, is really inc incredible as these 3,000 sinful souls are now saved and forgiven. But here's the question. How do we know that they're really saved? How do we know that they're really forgiven? Anybody can say I'm saved. Anybody really can be baptized. That's why we have a process. Anybody can get into the water. Anybody can say I'm a Christian. How do you know when you're really saved? What are some signs? It's, it, it's kind of like uh, when Jen Chike said, I'm pregnant, you know, so they got three babies. They about to have their fourth uh, child. But then, you know, how do we know that Jen is really pregnant? How do we know that she ain't just saying that to get some sympathy from Zach or, get, you know, just to chill out a little bit more? How do we know that? Well, we know that she pregnant because 
I was just over at their house and there is, I know there's a lot of signs, but I saw one big one, uh, uh, a nice little cute round basketball like belly. All right. She's got that like, yeah, you know, all the pregnant women, she got a little bump, got a little belly right there. And that's the baby. She, she, she has some proof that what she says about a life on the inside of her is true. And guess what? If a life, as precious as that life is, that baby's a sinful baby and needs to be saved. As precious as that, that human life is, if that human life inside of Jen shows outward signs, how much more? Does a supernatural, sovereign, sinless savior who we claim to be on side of us. How much more should Jesus in us show signs if a sinful child in a woman shows outward signs? That's what Paul is getting at in 2 Corinthians 13 when he says, examine yourself to see if Jesus is in you because there are some signs. And I just want to look at five of them. From this early church, they repented, they believed, the Holy Spirit came and lived in them. How do we know when the spirit of Jesus is really on the inside? Number one, we see it right here in Acts chapter two. You love other Christians. You love other Christians. We're back in this text again that we always find ourselves in the early church, the description of the early church. This is mama, y'all. So we need to keep running back to mama because she gave us birth. This early church gave us birth. And so we go back and we see when your salvation is real, not perfect, but when it's real, you love other Christians. We see love all over the place in this early church. In verse 42, it says they were devoted to the fellowship. Can you say fellowship? Yeah, fellowship. That's a love word. Fellowship is not just talking before and after worship. Fellowship is not just eating a good meal together. Fellowship, this is, this is my best definition that I could think of for fellowship. If you got a better one, let me know. Fellowship is simply enjoying God together in all of life. Consciously enjoying who God is, what he's done, what he's doing in our lives, mingled throughout all of life. We walk with God and enjoy God together from food to fun to funerals. It's enjoying God in all of life. We have that spiritual connection with each other and with the Lord and we integrate them together in all of life. And watch this other love word in verse 44 and verse 46 of Acts 2. It says they were together. Can you say together? Yeah, together. Together is one of the only words repeated in this description of the church's community life. And we've talked about this over and over again because I believe the Holy Spirit wants to massage this into our community. We want to be like mama in Acts chapter 2. We love to be together when you love one another. When the Holy Spirit is in you, when you're really saved, you love to be together with other Christians. First John 3, 14 says this. If we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from spiritual death to life. You see that? See that proof? The Lord says you prove that you're not just talking, that you didn't just get baptized because it was the right religious thing to do. You love other believers in Jesus in a special way that you don't even love your own physical family, that you don't even love your own culture, that you don't even love your own color, that you don't even love your own city, that you don't even love your own school mascot, that you don't even love your own fraternity or sorority. Do you understand how deep it goes when you really are born again? When Jesus comes to live in you, you love people that love Jesus in a way that you don't even love your mama if she don't love Jesus. Do you see how deep that goes? Guess what, y'all? This might be a surprise. This loving church, mama church, the OG church, Acts 2 church, all these 3,000 people that got saved and now they're doing life together. This loving church was crazy diverse. This church was very diverse. Acts 2 5 says this church was made up of all nations, every nation. Because when they were there and the Holy Spirit came and Peter preached, these people from Middle East. 
from Africa. Read Acts 2 and see where they were from. These were black people, brown people, all people from every nation, all together. And if you keep reading through the books, book of Acts, you will see their differences cause some drama. It's not just in our day that racial and color differences cause drama, y'all. This is not an American issue. This started since the beginning of time. And in Acts 2, you keep reading through Acts 2, you see that their racial and preference differences cause some drama. But it was the love of Jesus that kept them, that's right, together. Together. They loved each other. They pressed through their differences, and the glue was the love of Jesus. And I want to highlight something, take a little side note and say this. While it will remain our priority under the Lord to blossom into a church that celebrates and reflects the black color and black culture of East St. Louis. Let me say it again. It will remain our priority. Hallelujah. This shouldn't even have to be said, but it has to be said. Uh, it will remain our priority to celebrate and reflect the black color and black culture of East St. Louis. Uh, that is true. No apologies for that. However, we must understand that as Christians, we always welcome our non-black siblings who embrace this priority. Because this is what the love of Jesus requires. The love of Jesus fill this diverse church. And may the love of Jesus fill our church, even as we prioritize reflecting and celebrating the black culture and black color of East St. Louis. Hallelujah. Amen. The love of Jesus is all on display in this church. And it's really what Jesus said in the first place, right? First, uh, uh, Jesus says in John 13, 35, quote, your love for one another, regardless of color or culture, your love for one another, church, disciples, will prove to the world, will prove to East St. Louis that you are my disciples. So the question is, do you love other Christians? We got to keep moving. That's just number one. Number two, when your salvation is real, you love God's word, the Bible. You love this book. It says they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching. They were devoted to the word. They were devoted to the word. That's what I pray for this summer. This summer that the love between one another would be on display in our city. That loving the word would be on display in our hearts and our homes and our fellowship. This is what happens when God gives you a new heart by the spirit. You get a new hunger for the word. Did you hear that? These 3,000 people got saved. They were all diverse. They had some trials, but they kept loving each other. But one of the things that God used to keep them in that love was this book. They were devoted to the book. They said, not what the culture is saying, not what my mind is saying, not what the social media is saying. The book, the church has always been devoted to the scriptures. First Peter 2. 2 through 3 says, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow up if you've truly tasted that the Lord is gracious. He's saying, look, as a newborn babe, if you've really tasted the grace of the gospel, if you really know Jesus, if he's really on the inside of you, then one of those first signs is you've got a desire like a new baby for the word of God. Y'all, I got five kids. I got five kids. And one of the things that I know is one of the first signs that you know your child is alive and that they're healthy is that they're desiring and craving milk. Milk from mama, milk from formula. God created new life through the womb to desire milk. God created new spiritual life to desire the milk of the word. That's what first Peter is saying. It's saying if you're born again, if you've really met Jesus, then you have a desire for the book. Now, listen, will your desire go up and down? Yes. Sometimes you won't feel like being in the word. Yes. Sometimes you will. Yes. But will it be a real authentic desire? Yes. And I pray that the Holy Spirit is even using this reminder to restir your craving for the word because you're going to get weak and die and be pushed around by your sin and the devil. If you are not in the word, you were created to live 
off of the word. When you love the word, when God changes your heart, you do crazy things like wake up in the morning and read the word like I saw my carrots doing the other day. That's how I know it's real. This sister is waking up and devouring the word. When you are changed, you do crazy stuff like uh, think about the word that you read all day long. The Bible calls it meditating. When you are changed on the inside, you do crazy stuff like tell other people, text other people about the word that you read earlier that day. Listen, if you know the Lord, one of the signs is you love the word. I stopped by uh, 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 Zay and Leanne's house the other day and it so blessed me that they were talking about how they were in 1 Timothy 2 together and they were speaking the truth and encouraged my soul. The word! May God raise up more Karis's, more Zays, more, more Leans. And I know several of you love the word, but may the Lord make us a word-loving church because that's one of the signs. And we got some opportunities this summer to go deeper in the word together. Stay tuned for that. So, so uh, uh, when you really know the Lord, you Love other Christians, you love the word, but then when your salvation is real, you love to pray. You love to pray. Verse 42 says, they devoted themselves to prayer. They devoted themselves to the prayers. This is our spiritual inheritance. This is mama. This is OG. This is what happens when the Holy Spirit takes you deeper than baptism, deeper than saying, I'm a Christian. I go to church. Do you pray? How is your prayer life? These people were devoted to the prayers. Listen, pardoned people are praying people. Pardon just means forgiven. If you're really forgiven, one of the signs is that you talk to your daddy. I'm going to go back to one of my kids again, because I've shared this example before. Um, Karis, my oldest daughter, when she was first born, we got it on video. She came out kind of like this. Now, notice. I didn't hear her breathing. Her mama didn't hear her breathing. She wasn't doing anything. She would just. And on the video, you can hear Karen in the background say, is she going to breathe? Is she going to cry? Is she going to cry? Why does she keep saying, is she going to cry? Why? Because crying equals breath and breath equals life. And praise God, my carriage started crying, which means she's breathing, which means she's alive. This is what Romans 8, 15 says. Listen, it says, you have received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Did you hear that? We cry, Abba, Father, as new sons and daughters, which means like carriage spiritually speaking, crying out to God as father in prayer is one of the first evidences of being spiritually alive. If you never pray, you don't know God. If you don't have a relationship with Abba, Daddy, Father through prayer, you may not know him. Listen, prayer is breathing for the Christian. Take in the oxygen of the Holy Spirit. Take in all of the spiritual resources and minerals uh, 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 and vegetables and fruit of the Holy Spirit. When we pray, we breathe. When we breathe, we live. Listen, get in the word. Get in prayer. Walk in the word. Walk in prayer. God wants to strengthen you against your favorite sin. God wants to strengthen you against your idols. God doesn't want you to pop off on people all the time. God doesn't want you to cave into depression and discouragement and anxiety. God doesn't want you to fall into sexual sin. God doesn't want you to be deceived. God doesn't want anger and pride to get the best of you. Listen, God has given his people the breath and the oxygen of prayer and the milk of the word to strengthen us this summer, this day, this season, so that we might glorify him. Oh, when you meet Jesus, radical changes happen. They're not perfect. Yes, even your prayer life goes up and down. Your word life goes up and down. But listen, it's authentic. And when you hear a word like this, the Holy Spirit says, get back in the word. And when you hear a word like this, the Holy Spirit says, get back on your knees. 
and get back to loving people, even if they disagree with you and don't look like you and all of that. Listen, you're a Christian. And you're loving Christians. You're in the word. You're in prayer. A few more and I'm done. When your salvation is real, you love the gospel. You love the good news. You don't get over it. You, 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 you don't graduate from it. You begin to understand that what Jesus did 2,000 years on the cross has welcomed me into every inheritance that God ever gave me. It's the cross. It's the gospel. It says they broke bread together on a regular basis. That's uh, a.k.a. Lord's Supper, verse 42. It represents the glorious good news, the tearing of the body of Jesus on the cross, the blood dripping down. That sacrifice is why you're not going to hell. That sacrifice is why you are forgiven. That sacrifice is why you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. That sacrifice is why you can call God Father. That sacrifice is why you have a desire for the Bible. That sacrifice is what empowers you to love other Christians. When you really have Jesus on the inside, you love the gospel, and, and more specifically, you love what the gospel means for you personally. Like Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, but not I, it's Christ that lives within me, and now the life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who gave himself up for me, who loves me. That's why you celebrate the gospel. You thank God personally for the gospel. We thank God collectively as a community for the gospel. That's why we enjoy the Lord's Supper on a regular basis to remind us as a collective together that we owe everything to the bloody cross and to the empty grave. Because look, he was rejected so you would be accepted. He was forsaken so that you would be forgiven. He was killed so you would live. That's why we worship the Lord for the gospel. And then finally, finally, y'all, finally, when your salvation is real, these sinful souls, they got cut to the heart. They didn't know what to do. Peter told them to Turn from your sin. Trust in Jesus. Be baptized. 3,000 got saved. The Holy Spirit came in them. And it was proof that they had been transformed, y'all, because they loved each other and they loved the word and they loved to pray and they loved reminding themselves of what Jesus did on that cross. And then finally, they, they loved to praise God. They loved to praise God. When your salvation is real, you, you just love to praise God. How can you not praise God when you think about all that he has done for you and with you and, and who he is in our lives? He's our everything. They praise God. Verse 47 says they were praising God in the temple and at home. They, was at, they didn't have a religious life on Sundays and it's my life on Thursdays. No, no, they was praising God. They knew every day was a God day and they praised him in the ups and in the downs. We don't mainly love the gospel. We love the gospel, but we mainly love the gospel because the gospel brings us to our God. The cross brings us to our God. Jesus says, I am the way to the Father. And so we rejoice. We praise him because the cross brings us to God. You know, on this Juneteenth weekend, one of the things I was celebrating is uh, the black heritage of the black church that's been passed down to me. I've been celebrating and praising God because the, the, the church throughout history, slavery, segregation, systemic injustice, whatever it may be, I praise God on this Juneteenth weekend because one of the, 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 the legacies that I've received is uh, uh, my forefathers knew how to praise God. Oh my goodness, a praising church. The historical black church has been always a praising church, a clapping church, a dancing church, a tambourine church, a hallelujah church, hallelujah through it all. Hallelujah in the ups, hallelujah in the downs, right there at St. Matthew, right there on 29th of Louisiana. I learned how to praise God. Pilgrim Temple in the South End, CME Church, I drove by there the other day. I learned how to praise God. My first song in that little basement on the South End of East St. 
Louis, when I went with my great aunt at about four years old, the, the, the old saint said, praise him, praise him, all ye little children. And then they just began to praise the Lord, praise him, praise him. They would just break out in praise, break out in shouts. And I, and I, and I, and I want to challenge this generation of protest. Uh, 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 it's good to protest, y'all. Against the injustices and all that. But oh, if you are part of the church, you can't forget your praise. They praise their way through their problems. Praise. Because when we praise God, he begins to fill us with joy. And he begins to open up doors and break chains. And as the old folks used to say, even make your enemies behave. And so be encouraged, Christ follower, if Jesus of Nazareth, the brown brother from the hood, oh yes, the son of God, if Jesus of Nazareth lives in you, there will be some clear, obvious signs of transformation. You will not perfectly but authentically love other Christians, no matter what they look like, no matter what they dress like, no matter what they vote like. You love other Christians, love God's word, you'll love talking to the Father, you'll love celebrating the gospel, and you'll mainly love God himself, and you'll give him all the praise. Will you sin? Yes. Will you fall short? Yes. Will you stray? Yes. But if you're really the Lord, you'll keep bussing U-turns because the Holy Spirit will convict you and say, love your brother Love your sister. Get the word back open. Get on your face again. Give me all the praise. Don't forget the cross. And so the closing question is, do you see any of these signs in you? I know they might be little flickers, but they're real. And if you do, just praise God because it's his spirit. And pray for more. And pray that we would be a church that is flooded by these five graces and it will flow out into the city. And if, if you don't have any of these signs and if you're like, I don't really know Christ, then this is a good day to bow to the Savior and say, change me, Jesus. I trust you and I love you. And so, Father, get all the praise, get all the glory, fill our church with these five graces and flood the streets, even the world, for your glory through us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Peace.